Hello and welcome to this lesson on the resistivity investigation for the electricity topic for AQAA level physics. So in today's lesson we're going to look at how you can measure the resistivity of a material via experimental methods. So if you've been successful and you've learned in today's lesson you should be able to understand the property of resistivity in a material, look at how we can carry out an experiment to determine the electrical properties of a material and then analyse the results and finally determine the resistivity of a no material via experimental methods. So in today's lesson we're going to be looking at the following part of the AQA A level physics specification 3.5.1.3 resistivity in particular the required practical five the determination of the resistivity of a wire using micrometer ammeter and voltmeter. So in this investigation the aim is to calculate the resistivity of something such as nichrome wire via experimental methods. Now to calculate resistivity correctly in an experiment you must carry out three steps Steps. The first step is to calculate the resistance of the wire you'd use in your investigation via current and potential difference measurements taken from the wire. Now the resistivity can be worked out uh, with a graph. The second step is to determine the length of the wire using a ruler and the cross-sectional area of the wire using a screw gauge micrometer which will measure the diameter of the wire which you can then determine the cross-sectional area from. Then in the final step, you can substitute the values of length, cross-sectional area and resistance in the resistivity equation to calculate the resistivity. So in this experiment, we're going to try and measure the resistivity of a sample of nichrome wire. So you've got to experimentally calculate the value of resistivity and compare it to an accepted value. So for this uh, experiment, you would need nichrome wire, a power pack, electrical wire, an ammeter, voltmeter, a rheostat, a heat proof mat, a one meter ruler and a screw gauge micrometer. Now, the method works as follows. You cut a length of nichrome wire and you must decide the length. You then coil the wire around a pencil and then remove the pencil. You then attach a wire to the component holder. You set up a basic circuit with an ammeter and coiled wire in series with a rheostat and a power supply. The coil should be stretched slightly so that the separate turns are not touching each other. You then place a heat proof mat under the coil, although you should not let the coil get too hot. You then connect a voltmeter in parallel with the coil. You then set the setting on a power pack in rheostat to ensure that the current is no larger than 1.3 amps. Measure the current and potential difference with the ammeter and voltmeter respectively. Then change the setting on the rheostat and power pack to achieve different current and potential difference readings, taking both positive and negative values. You would then measure the length of your wire and check the diameter using the, uh, screw, the, my, the screw gauge micrometer and then you take the diameter as the number of places along the wire and then average out the results. So in this investigation you are going to measure the resistivity of nichrome wire. Now nichrome is an alloy of nickel and chromium and you can uh, carry out this investigation for either a pure metal or an alloy. Now wires are measured in something called SWG which stands for standard wire gauge so a wire of SWG30 has a diameter of 0 0.3150 millimeters so you can see where roughly your values for diameter you measure should lie within that. So to measure the diameter of the wire you would retrieve a screw gauge micrometer. Now a screw gauge micrometer can measure to a resolution of 0.01 millimetres. You would then need to retrieve a voltmeter to measure potential difference. Now ideally a voltmeter has an infinite resistance. You would then need an ammeter to measure the current and again ideally an ammeter has no resistance. You would then get a rheostat for the circuit. Now a rheostat is a variable resistor with two connectors. So it can vary potential difference in current to a minimum but those values can never reach zero. Now if you were going to use a potentiometer, a potentiometer is a variable resistor with three terminals and a potentiometer is connected in parallel to the air wire in this investigation. Now a potentiometer can produce potential differences of zero and up to a maximum value. You would also need electrical wires which would have an internal resistance and you would need crocodile clips which are used to connect the rheostat to the electrical circuit. You would also need a component holder to hold the nichrome wire in place. You would measure the length of wire using a meter ruler. Now a good experimenter should uh, decide the length of wire you want to use in the investigation with a clear explanation as to why this value has been chosen. Now the meter ruler should be taped down to ensure the value you measure with it is accurate and the wire should be pulled taut so that no kinks are present so an accurate length is measured of the wire. You've also got to ensure that the wire and the ruler are parallel to each other 
which prevents a parallax error in your experimental results. After this point, you would use a screw gauge micrometer and measure the diameter of the wire at a number of different parts. Now again, you as the experimenter should decide how many times you measure the diameter of the wire and have a clear explanation as to why you picked that number of values. Remember to always check the screw gauge micrometer for a zero error before taking measurements. So you then also ensure the screw gauge micrometer is measuring the wire without compressing it. So the screw gauge micrometer should hold the wire securely but not squash the wire. So you would measure the diameter of this uh, using the scale on the screw gauge micrometer. Now again remember our main scale shows 0.5 millimeters per marking and the value on the side the thimble scale shows the reading of the air uh, wire in terms of 0.0 millimeters. So for example here it's reading 30 so therefore the answer is 0.30 millimeters. You would add the main scale and the thimble scale together to get your full diameter measurement. You should then use either an iron bar or pen, coil the wire. Now the coils should be slightly spread out and not touching each other. If they are touching each other, it will cause a short circuit. So you may wish to use a finger or a pen or an iron bar to achieve this. You then remove the wire and ensure the coils are spaced out and not touching. The component holder is then used to have the coil wire placed inside of it. It uses a safety measure to stop the wire burning the desk and ensuring the coils are spaced out and not touching. You would then use wires and place a power pack nitro wire rheostatin ammeter in series. Try to ensure you've connected so the ammeter is reading a positive value and ensure that you place one rheostat connector at the top and one at the bottom of the rheostat. Now this system is a potential divider because it splits the potential difference between the outputs. So for example if the EMF of the power source was 10 volts well the PD of the rheostat could be 6 volts and the PD of the wire could be 4 volts and we assume the ammeter takes takes no PD because we assume it has no resistance. Again, it could be 8 volts for the rheostat and 2 volts for the air wire, or it could in fact be 3 volts for the rheostat and 7 volts for the air for the wire. Now this is why a rheostat can actually not produce a maximum or zero potential difference because it always takes some of the potential difference because it acts as a potential divider, which is a very important idea. But you can use the rheostat to alter values in the circuit, so therefore you've got a different potential difference going through uh, the wire at different points. Now you will place a voltmeter in parallel with the nichrome wire, so that's very very important and the voltmeter is always placed in parallel with the device that is being measured, in this case the nichrome wire. You then measure the potential difference in current and you use the ammeter and voltmeter to do this, measuring the values simultaneously. Now always remember to turn off the power pack in between the values so that the, the temperature of the wire does not get too hot. Now again you alter the rheostat and the power supply to gain different values. Now the rheostat has an exponential change, not a linear change, so shifting the connector double does not double the current. Now you must have a clear explanation of which values or potential difference in current you have used but remember you should never get a value of current above 1.3 amps for safety reasons. Now again you may choose the number of readings taken and the values of readings taken but have a clear explanation for the number of repeats and the number of values that you choose. Now again remember to swap the wires on the power pack to gain negative values for the electrical circuit then you must take the same number of positive and negative readings. Now at this point now you've got your values of current and potential difference you can via graphical methods work out resistance, you can work out the area of your wire from the diameter and you can measure the length with your ruler and you can work out the resistivity of your material. So to summarize we know that resistivity is equal to rho equals RA over L so you can measure R with the current potential difference graph, you can work out A from the diameter of the wire and then you can work out L by measuring the length of the wire directly. You can then use that to work out resistivity. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we should be able to understand the properties of resistivity in a material, look at how we can determine an experiment to determine the electrical properties of a material, and then determine the resistivity of a no material via experimental methods. So thank you very much for watching this uh, lesson on the resistivity investigation for the electricity topic in AQAA level physics. Thank you very much for listening, and as always, have a lovely day.